This is the second lesson for Physics 12, Chapter 6. It's like the first lesson, very short. We're just going to take a look at resistance and, uh, and a look at Ohm's Law. Uh, so first of all, resistance, the job of a resistor, it's just to limit the, the current flow, just to slow the electricity down. We don't want to have the electricity flowing too fast. Um, so just for an example, I've also got my little uh, circuit animator here. This is a new version from FET. Um, it's actually kind of nice. It's got some uh, neat features to it. If I don't have a resistor in the circuit and then I go and close this switch, then yeah, you know, it shows a little fire, right? It's like, hey, there's a problem. The electricity is just going too fast. Uh, but if I go and put a resistor in there, it's just like an obstruction trying to slow down that flow of electricity. And so now if I close the switch, I can see that the flow is actually much, much nicer. It's moderated. I can also see that it's very annoying because it's going the wrong way. You know, it's the one big mistake we did in physics. We got the charge carrier sign wrong. We thought it might have been positives, and it turns out it's actually negatives, going from the negative end of the battery to the positives. This new version of the, the little simulator lets you actually switch over so you can see, like, little Benjamin Franklin arrows. I love it. So there's the current going clockwise from the positive end of the battery out towards the negative end. And yes, yes, you know, the actual story is that electrons are going the wrong way. But whenever we talk about current, just traditional current or conventional current, it's just going to be this idea that it could be positives going from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. And so that resistor there is just there to slow things down. So some things we know actually from Physics 11. The symbol for resistance is a capital R. And the units, sometimes we'll use a small r actually as well. The units are named after a, an old physicist, so they're called ohms. And uh, the symbol for that, if we want to abbreviate it, we actually use the Greek letter omega, probably because it sounds like the person's name. Uh, so it's just the capital Greek letter omega. The lowercase letter omega looks more like a w, but the capital one looks like that strange little horseshoe symbol. Uh, anything that I've got in a little purple box, you, you don't need to write down in notes, just, just some things to take a look at. If you wanted to actually measure the resistance, we don't call it a resistance meter. We name all of the meters after the units, so they're called an ohm meter. And you would want to take the resistor out of the circuit first because the ohm meter might start measuring alternative pathways beside the resistor. So you take it out of the circuit, you take your ohm meter, attach it before and after the resistor, and it'll use a little voltage to force some current and tell you how obstructive it is, how much resistance it's got. So you do have to remove it from the resistor first, then you, or from the circuit first, and then you can put it back in. Now, a strange little thing here. Um, again, you know, pencils down, you don't have to write this down, just something to think about. It's kind of weird how backwards we are in physics, where we actually reward bad, thin wires that don't have the ability to let a lot of electricity flow. We reward them with a big number. Right? We give them a big resistance value. And nice, thick, wide wires that can easily let electricity flow, we actually give them a low number. Say, no, no, they're not very obstructive. So just making numbers up, that thin little bad wire, if you wish, that doesn't let a lot of electricity flow fast, would get a big number like 20. But the good wire would actually get a low number like 5. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end of the lesson here too. Just a strange way that you could fix that. So that's resistance. Uh, once you have that dialed in, then Ohm came along with this relationship and he said, hey, a lot of materials, maybe not every material in electronics, but a lot of materials are what we call ohmic, right, named after him. And they abide by this idea that the more you push with the voltage, the better your flow and the bigger the resistance, the, the reduced flow you've got. So this just relates the, the current flow to that voltage that you apply. This is the best way to think about Ohm's law hands down this this crazy little cartoon here that shows the voltage person is trying to push the current push the amps through the circuit and the stronger the volt person is the better you're going to get flow flowing but the ohms are like this little obstruction trying to resist that uh, current from flowing by obstructing the pipe and so the stronger the ohms the slower the amps are going to flow through so you have this battle going on between the volts and the resistance right between the volts and the ohms just thinking about checks and arrows because the voltage is up in the numerator the larger the voltage the larger the current if the resistance is kept the same and the lower the voltage if you put a little down arrow on the v you're going to get a down arrow on the i you're going to get less current if the resistance is the same the converse is true the reverse is true when you look at the resistance because it's in the denominator again this comes back to the fact that we reward bad wires with big numbers 
So a larger resistance, more resistance, actually is going to give you less current. Again, think about the little picture here. The stronger the R, less current will flow because it'll pinch that pipe. And less resistance, a less strong little resistance little character there, results in more current flowing. Okay, so keep that in mind whenever you go and do your questions. And we're just going to do two quick ones here, and then this lesson's really done. Uh, first example, uh, let's see if we can find the current that's going to flow if a 14.7 volt battery is attached to a 3.5 ohm resistor. Um, perhaps typical voltages and currents um, and resistance values for like a cordless drill. So I can just use Ohm's law. I can put the voltage on the top, the resistance on the bottom. This story is done very, very fast. The answer ends up being 4.2. Okay, and it would be a current, so it's measured in amps. And then this question's done. Okay, just 4.2 amps. Now, new question. Okay, so different one to write down. Last one really to write down of the day. Let's say you've got a 4.25 volt battery, and it's attached to a 2.2. And then if you look closely here, this says K. This is kilo ohms for the resistance. And so you might have to use your knowledge of the metric system or your metric system guide that's on your formula sheet in order to do these questions. So again, stuff in purple you don't have to write down. This is off your formula sheet. And I can see kilo, the K, means a thousand, right, times 10 to the 3. So we have to use that before we start calculating with Ohm's law. So 4 point, or sorry, 2.2 kilo ohms would be 2,200 ohms. And I'd want to put that into my calculation. Now this value is accurate, it's the number of amps. It has way too many sig figs, but it is the number of amps. Now some options, and maybe I should go stronger than options, some expectations that you'd be willing to switch this around with the metric system. Yes, you could say decimal 0019 amps. There you go, two sig figs. But it's probably not the way most electricians or physicists would talk about that current. So you should be ready, it's an expectation of you, that you'd be ready to switch that to milliamps. And so you can say, hey, 0019, that's the same thing as 1.9 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, so the metric system really works best if you slide things in groups of 3. This works great. We can move the decimal three spots and say 1.9. Going back to my little sheet here, this is my formula sheet, I can see that 10 to the negative 3, if you move it three spots, that's milli right there, little m, like millimeters. And so instead of saying 10 to the negative 3, I can put the little m there and say 1.9 milliamps. Incredibly common to see that, and you should feel that, that that's an expectation on you, that you'd be willing to talk in milliamps at any point, and, and kilo ohms of resistance. Okay, very, very common. Many of you have probably seen this from junior science, the little crazy triangle thing. That is a horrible thing to use. Yes, I know how it works. It is just the worst thing ever to use. Use this. Right? Seriously, I know it's a bit silly looking, but that's the image you want to have in your mind. The voltage is pushing, so a stronger volt means more current for a given resistance. The resistance is obstructing, so a stronger ohms is going to mean less current for a given voltage. Okay? If you have that in your mind, you will do much, much better than this thing. Okay? So stick with the little cartoon in your mind. It's going to work really well. Now, that's really the end of the lesson. I just want to show you some things. Don't, don't bother writing this down, but just some neat things that you'll see in university. I've got two circuits here. They both have 10 volts. One's got a nice, thick, wide wire that would accept a lot of a current to flow fairly fast. The other one is a narrow little wire, not quite as good for letting electricity flow. Okay, I'm going to make up some numbers here. Okay, So my thick wire, nice large diameter, it's going to ha have a low resistance, and the thin wire, smaller diameter to it, it's going to have a larger resistance. So maybe these are the numbers that you might see. Again, we, we reward bad wires with big numbers. It's kind of backwards, really, right? And that forces us to divide in Ohm's law. So again, you don't have to write this down. I just wanted to show you this. You could use Ohm's law, and it is backwards now. It's got that divide by R because we've rewarded the bad wire with a big number. And you can calculate 10 divided by 5 is 2 amps, and 10 divided by 20 is 0.5 amps. So it's accurately saying you're going to get more current flowing in the thick wire. But it's so unfortunate that you have to divide by that resistance value because we've chosen to talk about how bad the wire is. It would be neat if we could talk about how good the wire is. And we actually do do that in physics, but not in high school. So instead of resistance, we can talk about conductance. And the symbol for that is a capital G. Think of it as standing for how good the wire is. 
and it is literally the reciprocal of resistance. That's how we do it in university. So in this story here, if you were to take the 5 ohm resistor, 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. And then for the bad wire with 20 ohms of resistance, 1 divided by 20 is decimal 0, 05. And now Ohm's law doesn't have to be written as a divide by badness. You can actually write it as a multiply by goodness. And so this is Ohm's law, but with conductance. You can write it as voltage pushing and good wires accepting, and you multiply those two issues together, and it correctly predicts the right current that's going to flow there. The weird thing about this is you'd have to come up with some units and a symbol for this thing called conductance. And we do this in physics. It's kind of funny the way we actually decide to do this. But we have ohms for resistance. For talking about the conductance, for how good the wire is, we actually take the idea of ohms and we just literally write it backwards. So we go with mos of resistance, right, instead of ohms. And the symbol for it is an upside down little omega, capital omega. But it is literally the word ohm just written backwards. Okay, we talk about mos of conductance. Kind of neat. Final thing, also you don't have to write this down just for shadowing. Remember uh, last year we talked about you know circuits actually having a schematic uh, technical diagram that looks like this. The battery is a couple of lines, one line bigger than the other. That's the positive one. The resistance is like a little zigzag. Think of a race car chicane, slowing the race cars down. Currents are measured with ammeters that are installed in series. That way the current has to flow through that ammeter. And as it flows through the ammeter, that ammeter can be monitoring it. The voltmeter is like a little inspector and it checks the voltages before and after things, maybe before and after gains at a battery or losses at a resistor. And you connect voltmeters up in parallel. Our analogy that we used last year, and we're gonna to continue to use it because it works well, is shopping. So batteries and banks are the same thing. Batteries give joules to every coulomb of charge that flows through the wire. Banks give dollars to every customer that comes through them. That way they can go shopping. An ammeter is kind of like a turnstile that can measure customers per second, but it does not monitor the amount of money on board each customer. Then you go through a resistor, and a resistor is like a store where you have to spend your money. And the more money you spend, the better service you get, the faster you get through. A voltmeter has to inspect the money before and after, and that's actually going to be like a little wallet inspector that's going to check your wallet before and after a device, and it reports back on the difference, just how different your wallet is from before and after something. So it gives you a value that's actually in dollars per customer, right? For every customer, how many dollars are they spending or gaining? And the ammeter is actually recording, you know, we call it amps, and it's, you know, technically coulombs per second, but it's like customers per second. So we're going to continue to use that analogy through Physics 12. It works really well. And that's the end of our second lesson.